Welcome to Benoit Wilson's Detroit. I'm your host, Joe Chap, and today we'll be talking about college football. Now, a lot of people, when they saw Lane Kiffin trending on Twitter, they were like, what the hell did Lane Kiffin do? And, like, was he left on a tarmac? Did he eat a bad bowl of pasta ravioli? What did he do? But he had some very good points at SEC Media Day, and we are going to get into it. So, in SEC Media Day, Lane Kiffin sounded off on the state of college football. He called the current state of college football a disaster, saying the unintended consequence of NIL is pay for play. He said the, the transfer portal is NFL free agency except with no contracts and the ability to enter twice a year, saying college sports is now professional sports but with no salary cap or luxury tax causing massive problems. Now, a long time ago, the college football used to be governed by the NCAA. They are no longer around, it feels like. I, I, I feel like the NCAA has turned a blind eye to the NIL because they never won it in the first place. That's number one. Number two, yes, college football is in a state of disaster because what a lot of people don't realize is that college football has a certain decorum to it. Now, there has always been cheating there has always been money put under tables but now that you have allowed it at an extreme level like you have where there's players that have earned absolutely nothing as freshmen coming in and making millions and that's an issue because you set up the possibility of a player coming just for the money and we've seen it at certain universities i'm not going to name names texas a&m but i am going to name names miami and that's how it is i mean there are certain uh universities where you look at them and you go wait they just beat out georgia and alabama for a recruit and they haven't been nothing lately here's the issue with college football right now and here's why if we don't get this situated and there is no governing body in the future, college football can end up in a disaster zone. Lane Kiffin said that if you know there's no regulation, there's it's going to lead to less parity, and he's right. Here's why he's right. Because when you look at the broad spectrum of all the states in the country, there's different laws on the books for NIL and what you have to do to maintain NIL, what you have to do to get NIL. In certain states, there are no laws. It's just you can get paid by this this guy. And there's really not a law that is very, like, kind of on course for what, you know, the NIL conversation is. So you got different states following different laws. You have different universities following different, you know, policies because of academics and all that such. But let's be honest, college football has never been about academics. Unless you're Vanderbilt, unless you're Northwestern, unless you're Stanford, unless you're Harvard, you're Brown, you're you're not playing football. You're just basically having smart kids play football. And that's just it's sometimes a bad product. We've seen Stanford be good. We saw Northwestern be good. We've saw Vanderbilt for a little bit be better than we expected. But where Lane Kiffin is right is if we don't eventually get a governing system for college football, if we don't get centralized rules for college football, what is going to happen eventually is there are going to be teams that are literally bought and paid for more than they already are. Right now, you're starting to see there's kind of a, a, a lot of teams in the mix. Other, you know, Obviously, Georgia has been a dynasty, and, and they've done it because they are an absolute just coached well. They get the talent. Um, but when you have teams like Texas A&M, and you have teams like Miami, and you have teams that are like routinely getting top five classes when they've done absolutely nothing, it's a little bit puzzling, to be honest, because – I live in the state of Michigan. I'm not a Michigan fan, but I live in the state of Michigan. And when I look at University of Michigan, I they've won the Big Ten twice in a row. They've went to the college football playoff twice in a row. And they had an inability to struggle with getting recruits early in the cycle. And they have lost recruits because to Miami, to Texas A&M, because obviously people are not going to say, 
oh, they they went because of the money. And I'm going to say, yeah, some of them did go for the money. And you can see it in the transfer portal because when you look at the transfer portal, routinely you will see a player who doesn't start, who gets paid to go to a school. He goes there, doesn't get to start. He transfers. He goes to another school, doesn't play well, transfers again. Like, this is a whole different issue. You know, the governing body, central body that I'm talking about, they have to put in place rules where you cannot exploit the system because what's going to happen eventually is you're going to have teams that are using the transfer portal as a way to kick players out. And I think we've already started to see it with, like, you know, with, uh, with, uh, uh, San, you know, with uh, prime time, you know, Coach Prime. I think I think we've seen it with Michigan State in my home in my home state. I think we've saw it a lot with the new coaches coming in. They've pretty much kicked some players out, you know, sent them to other you know conferences, and it opens up a bad apple kind of thing to happen. So if college football is going to save itself. They are going to have to get a central and governing body. They are going to have to make it work. And they are going to have to make sure that what they do doesn't affect their long-term possibilities. Because a lot of people love college football more than the NFL. And one of the reasons that they love college football more than the NFL is because in the NFL, some of the players are making obscene amounts of money. And with college football, you still see the pageantry, you still see the traditions, and you still see, you know, the rivalries that make this sport great. What you're seeing now is players leaving just because they aren't getting paid. You're seeing players that are in, um, you know, a certain uh, university for absolutely no reason at all. And it's just opening up Pandora's box of what could happen down the line. If there's no governing body, the fear is that you become, that college football becomes way more than they've ever thought it would become in terms of professional football. Look, I know people should be able to make money in the NIL circuit, and they should. Absolutely. If you are a great player, if you are a Marvin Harrison Jr., if you are a Bryce Young, if you are a Brock Bowers, if you are a Bryce Young, if you are, you know, a Jordan Davis back in the day, absolutely should be allowed to do NIL. But when I'm talking about these players that are coming in to these universities making $500,000 when they have earned absolutely none of that $500,000 just off what off they did in high school, that's where I have a problem. And I think that if college football doesn't get their act together, they could ultimately lose the passion of the sport. And I know a lot of people that are watching this that might be watching this, Georgia fans, Tennessee fans, Alabama fans, they're like, it's not going to happen to us. But the reality is it could. That's the reality. You might think that your your university is, is never going to face uh, hard times. You never know. If there's a team, a university out there that has tons of money and they want to spend it on football, they could literally buy a national championship because there are no rules right now. There are no governing rules right now. There's no rules for the transfer portal. We've seen that with Jordan Addison in USC. There are no rules with the NIL in terms of how you are going to get, get the money and how it's going to be you know divvied out and what's the regulations on that. These are the situations that we're talking about. And I know a lot of people are going to sit here and tell me, but Joe, you know, this is, you know, college football is still great. Yeah, but if we aren't conscientious of the consequences, we could lose college football altogether. And I think that's the biggest crime to this great sport because this sport is built on, you know, the love of the university, the pageantry, the traditions, the rivalries, the great plays. And you feel like you're losing the pageantry little by little. You feel like you're losing the tradition because there are players that are going to universities and they don't really know the historic rivalries that, you know, if you grew up in Alabama, you know Alabama-Auburn. If you grew up in Michigan, you know Michigan-Michigan State. If you grew up in Michigan or Ohio, you know Michigan and Ohio State is one of the best rivalries in college football. 
But there are players that are coming from different schools who are getting NIL, and they're coming from, you know, Florida, or they're coming from a high school in South Carolina. They don't know anything about those rivalries, and they are only coming there because of the money, and that's the biggest issue. And what Lane Kiffin said is absolutely correct. If the college football doesn't get it situated, it will be the biggest farce in the sport because the sport will eventually erode. You know, we're seeing it a little bit in college basketball where the college basketball game is becoming a little bit unwatchable because these players are going to the NBA when they're totally not ready. You know, there's some that are ready, but there's some that are totally not ready. And year after year, you're seeing players that are freshmen and, and players that are, you know, not re- not really a player that should be starting on a college basketball roster that are playing meaningful minutes. And that is the issue with college sports right now. Look, you can't you can't save everyone, but you have to save the sport. That's the that's the bottom line. You can't save every university, but you have to save the sport because what's happening right now isn't college football. It's literally the major league baseball where you are there's no salary cap and there's no regulations and you're in you're in, you're in treachery water that you have never been as a college football fan. And if you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. I'll respond to your comments. Absolutely. And we're going to have more national college football uh, on this channel. So stay tuned to that. Subscribe to the channel. We'll have a lot of national college football. I want to start. We're going to start a, a national college football kind of thing on our channel because I love college football. And I think that there's an issue with college football and hopefully the people who run it, get this right because we are seeing the end of college football as we know it.